So, should we get started? Let's do it. All right. All right. So there are a bunch of questions in uh, the APAC and uh, EMIR section as well. Please copy them over um, if you need to. And then the first question is from Manuel. Yeah, thank you, Fabian. Um, could you outline the plan or the timeline for any self-managed customers regarding the architectural change uh, or for the database splitting in general? Yeah, Camille, you were typing away. You want to take it or? Um... Yes, uh, let me answer that. So we only have a really like a preliminary plans. Uh, we kind of anticipated that running compost is simpler. So it's more like a subset of running the compost, but it also it's like a difference in the behavior. So we at some point uh, in forcible feature, probably 16.0, want to have all our customers run exactly how we would run GitLab.com from the application perspective, which means like use a single physical server, but when a logical uh, databases to, to ensure that like uh, that none of our customers face the issue that we we are not sorry none of our customers face the issue that we are not seeing because of the way how we run that. This is really like a preliminary plan and it's really like a subject to change because it's gonna require some type of the downtime uh, to move data over, uh, but probably this can somehow be fully automated. 16.0 because between major releases we kind of anticipate some amount of the downtime be applicable to do to happen but like the the scope of these downtimes really varies by the customer and how much uh, data they would have so we want to do it we just don't know yet when the preliminary is like 16.0 and the idea is like to, to keep parity with how we run application on GitLab.com. Thank you, Camille, uh, for the for the details that, that helps to understand what we are doing here. Thank you. And Fabian, I think you you added the point like this really needed on GitLab scale, GitLab.com scale, basically, right? So it's not like mostly applicable to regular enterprise customers, even while we have pretty large ones. That's what yes. you're saying, right? That's correct. I think the, the main difference here is that on the scale of GitLab.com, we um, will benefit from having two separate physical database clusters because we are running into hardware limitations. And mm -hmm. that is not the case for our physic, like our self-managed customers as we speak. If we ever, let's say, were to publish a reference architecture for 100,000, 200,000 users, then you know that would be something that we would consider including saying this is how GitLab.com runs at scale. Um, mm -hmm. And the the reason why we are choosing this as a first step is it's essentially an iteration. We know that running in this mode will allow GitLab.com significant headroom. And then we can't really do this as like many times as we want, right? We have to functionally decompose and CI happens to be a large chunk of our rights. There may be some other features, but once we've decomposed, we have the headroom to actually then implement an architecture that allows for longer term horizontal scalability, which we don't have yet. And we need to mm -hmm. like figure out how to how to do that. Yeah, I mean, feel free to also get back to me because we did the same in my former company. So we scaled actually from an enterprise architecture to a SaaS architecture, and we ended up with having like hundreds of databases at the same time being auto-generated on demand, depending on how many um, customers were then provisioned. So um, just yeah. as a side note. Well, we do have an open position for a product manager to lead uh, that next um, next change in our architecture. So, you know, oh, of yeah. course, <laughs> encourage, uh, any applications, <laughs> internal applications are, uh, of course, preferred. Um, just yeah. putting it out there if you're interested. Yeah, thank you.
yeah, I think the next question is also uh, from my side, but I think we covered that already. Um, if yes. we know about specific customers who would benefit or which would benefit from such a uh, decomposition. But yeah, thank you for all the details already in the doc. Cool. Um, Chad, you had the next one. Sure. So uh, I think this is a great move uh, to be able to have separate data stores. My question is, uh, what discussion has there been around moving parts of our architecture in the Rails app to a, an event source CQRS architecture with different bounded context and aggregate routes uh, defined around the different domain areas? So you could then have the paradigm of the, the data stores for your, your event stream uh, are optimized for writes, right? Which is a completely different uh, architecture and tuning. And then you could have read models, projections off of the event stream that are tuned for whatever the needs of the particular uh, area of the application are and gives us a lot more flexibility uh, in the long run to deal with scaling problems that we currently have or ones that uh, may arise in the future. Yeah, I think Jerry, you have the, the first response. Yeah, I was gonna say we, we haven't had anything specific at this point. Uh, we're probably far away from needing to reach so deep into, you know, modifying the the underlying concept of the um, of the storage architecture. Part of it is we're an open core, uh, open source company. So translating that to things that people can do, like we we spoke a lot about when we were thinking about functional decomposition, is how is this going to affect people that are writing. Um, that are contributing to GitLab. Um, and we have some other avenues that, that we've been exploring and implementing uh, to be able to scale. Um, so I, I don't think we're close to having to think in these terms yet, but it's obviously an option in the future. So um, yeah, having some experience with these architectures, like from, uh, I worked on Pivotal Tracker for 13 years, and I think that uh, it's, we can be closer than uh, we think we are. There is an open source option for this uh, Rails event store. And I've been studying that on my own and uh, you know, hoped in the future do some spikes where it might help us. But in terms of contribution and complexity, I think this could actually help in some of those areas because some of the things we've done recently, for example, the, the linear namespace queries and other things, that we're trying to optimize both the read and the write side at the same time become more complex and less maintainable. And with an approach like this, you can sort of decouple these things, make them more cohesive and easier to understand within the specific implementation, even if the underlying architecture uh, is event source, which has different constraints, for example, versioning for somebody actually wanting to implement a feature, if they can have a very uh, specific requirements and not worry about couplings to everything in the system with the the big ball of crud, uh, which is you know the default Rails architecture. I think that might actually help maintainability and contributions. Just some thoughts. Yeah, I think at this point we're focusing on finishing up functional decomposition, at which point the current database scalability group will dissolve. But obviously, scalability is a full time thing. So once we reconstitute the next iteration of what that group is supposed to look like to look at what the future is, then this should definitely be an option that we discuss. And I'd love to hear about your experience with it. Yeah, and I hope that we can, you know, start it to have some working groups or, or SIGs or whatever we end up to, to specifically focus on these sorts of things long term. I'm really interested in helping that. Um, wonderful, Chad. Did that answer your your question? And sure. can we move on. Yeah, I, mean, I saw Camille had some points. I don't know if you wanted to verbalize those, Camille. 
Uh, it's, I, I guess like we could talk about this architecture in completely separate meeting because of how low that is the question. And I know that we had a bunch of the discussion in the past about domain-driven design, even base architecture, sagas, and, and different approaches for the application architecture for managing data. And we also had discussion about the data access layer and like offering like a flexibility on using a special or like optimized data stores for, for the given function. So chat, maybe we should, uh, it's really like, like hard, like on top of my head at least like to gather all of these issues. So maybe we should have like a separate discussion about that because there is like a, ma a lot of pure uh, discussion. Uh, and the, the tricky part about this question is would be really like, currently the question is super abstract. I mean, we can do all of that. The question is really like on what we would want to apply that, what would actually, what we would like to improve uh, the performance of or like a scalability of so uh, I think there are like probably many dimensions to your question that we need to like evaluate separately first is like application architecture of managing data race is very like opinionated on how you manage it's not the best in all cases uh, flexibility in, in using a special purpose data stores that are simply more tuned to what type of data we may be storing. I don't know, timescale DB, Postgres, SQL, Elastic. I know that we are also introducing new data stores that are not gonna be Postgres, uh, but also that really thinking through that on an actual thing that we want to improve to figure out how well it would fit into the current monolith. Uh, I think it's slightly beyond the scope of the decomposition yes. because the composition is really, it's trying to approach a very specific problem, but tries to approach a very specific problem. But your question really touches uh, uh, an efficiency of data management in like in this pure sense, which I think it's very valid, but it's on a completely different level compared to the composition and pods. Yeah. I think that's a great point, Camille. And just for the sake of time, and I want to make sure that um, you know we we can allow some more questions regarding decomposition. I think it's important to think about. I see there's even an event stream working group um, that may be relevant. I think for decomposition, it's a very specific iteration that we're hoping to ship soon. And I think after that, you know, we are going to investigate pods. But these are valid things that we need to figure out for sure. Yeah, thanks a lot. And I definitely don't want to hijack the discussion. I see this as like. Uh... A critical part of being able to support something like that, the ability to have uh, independent data stores. Uh, and yes, I definitely look forward to talking more about this in other forms, uh, just trying to raise visibility of it until they exist. Thanks, Jeff. Are there any other questions regarding the ongoing decomposition effort? Fabian, if, if we have questions we'd like to see answered from uh, the APAC meeting, should we just pull them up? Because I like uh, Tiago's sure. number, number three. Yeah, pull them up. And I can <clears throat> uh, voice since he's, he's not on. Um, perhaps the, I, I, I'm not sure like <clears throat> if, if there will be like any immediate need for decomposing other tables, but um, are sort of like the metrics that we identified for the CI tables relevant across other uh, functionality within GitLab? And do, do we have like any sort of um, tooling in place to, to proactively identify those sorts of things in the future? That, that may not be what he was getting at, but that, that's what I gleaned from his question. Yeah, I can, I can try to answer this. So, um, the decomposition effort identified CI-related um, tables because roughly 40% of the writes go in there and we're trying to scale writes. Um, 
I'm not sure we have specific tooling for that, but the analysis that we did um, early on also indicated that we have, let's say, 20% of the rights go to merge requests. And so those may be an interesting target for that um, as well. I think right now there are no plans to actually decompose further because we believe that you know, having a CI cluster already gives us enough scalability to you know, invest the time and effort in the next architecture, which is, which is pods. Um, so in a way, the CI decomposition deals mainly with write congestion. Um, it's important, I think, to highlight, and I wasn't quite sure if, if Tiago is getting at that, is there are many things that can be done that have nothing to do with decomposition to ensure that your features scale. So for example, you know, if you create a lot of data that you know, can benefit from time decay, you can partition them. And you know, it really depends on the access patterns of the, the tables, and we have different tools available to help, to help with that. Um, so I think that's, that's something I wanted to, um, to highlight. And then I think Tong also points out we do have forecasts for um, available in TAM land for Petroni. Um, yeah. Camille, you have some other comments. Um, I, I'm, I'm not able like, to answer all the questions, but you can find all of this information in the Grafana. Uh, I, I can link you later what to look at uh, in terms of the dashboards. This is like very generic. So, uh, but there is like probably two dimensions, like our primary problem today is like the scaling of the primary, uh, like main cluster, primary, right table node, uh, because this is like a single single contention we are fighting with other threads, and it actually like has uh, an impact on amount of the writes that you can perform and the data amount of the data that is being stored. Uh, and your ability to flash all of that and vacuum that type of the data. So this this is why we look at the CI because like it's big enough to make it like a good target to split because you get like a, a big gains. But I, I'm kind of jumping to D3 of my point. The CI may be enough um, if we now um, follow up that with the partitioning. And I mean, I know there's like a discussion of the CI partitioning, uh, but maybe there may need a partitioning for other tables that are part of the main cluster. We did not yet look at that. The need for the partitioning is like, it's still like limited amount by amount of the writes, but you make uh, the write amplification better. So partitioning helps with vacuuming, updating indexes, and much more targeted uh, queries being executed. But if partitioning will not be enough, we may actually may need to apply this decomposition playbook to another area. I I'm kind of now throwing uh, the idea that maybe another area to historically looking at to tackle would be like all the vulnerabilities, scans, um, feature that is right now part of the main database and there's probably, I don't know, 20% or like 30%. So um, graphs are in the Grafana. I, I, I can link you later what to look at uh, as for the next iteration. Probably not the composition, but we need to execute on the partitioning because if we don't execute on the partitioning, we already have CIB stable that I think is a few terabytes of work of data. It's very slow to update and vacuum and vacuuming is becoming a major problem for us. So partitioning, we, we help with that. Uh, but if we retain our rate of the growth of the data, we may actually, before posts get delivered, do another iteration of the decomposition on some of the data on relief and get more headroom. And when you reference uh, partitioning, are you talking about the CI tables in particular or, or just in general? I'm, I'm referencing right now the CI tables because they are the biggest right now. Um, and it kind of, the, uh, the need for the partitioning 
it's starts to like to to uh, be evident when you pass threshold of the size and amount of the rows and and the volume of the updates so ci is like the primary target but i would not i, I would kind of say that like all of our new features should be built with the partitioning in mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of our tables should be migrated into be partitioned in the future because it just makes it much easier to manage data. Um, and maybe most of the data is right now stored on the single database, but with the how Postgres is developing, maybe in the future we gonna attach partitions using foreign table wrappers as type type of the archive type of the storage to remove that from the from the main cluster. I don't know how it's gonna look, but I know that if we would have partition tables, it would be much easier in terms of the scaling. So the composition gives you a headroom to do partitioning, either of main or CI. That's 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 really like the benefit of the decomposition. Because today we really don't have a lot of headroom to to migrate into partition schema of big tables, and and the partitioning of of the CI tables is already ongoing, right? We have already started that. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I think I'm going to summarize the two links above. So, in my view. We have a number of tools and sort of guides available that can help scale our database and specific features. And so we should always consider our options. Decomposition will help in some cases, not in all cases. And you know, I think the important thing is that you know when we make these changes, we we look at you know what will have the most impact, you know, what's most iterative, and then um, go for that. Uh, you know, decomposition doesn't change your table sizes. If you have gigantic tables, you're moving them from A to B. That's not going to solve your problems with the, the table size. Um, but it is, you know, um, we're pretty confident going to solve some scalability issues on our database cluster on GitLab.com. And we're quite excited about it. I mean, it buy us probably around like one, two year more headroom does enough time to execute partitioning without like uh, rushing to to actually much better scale existing tables. So uh, that's like the benefit of the decomposition. It doesn't change the underlying tables, but it gives these tables more headroom because of the less load on the Postgres. But it still doesn't solve underlying deficiency of how we manage data. And it still needs to be solved. It will not be solved by themselves. I believe we have one minute remaining. Um, are there any further questions? Okay, then thank you so much, everyone, for um, for joining. Um, we're here to answer questions. You can ask them in in Slack in group sharding um, and yeah uh, there's another session later on in um, at 23 utc so um, if something comes up join there thank you so much bye